All right, guys, look, I messed up. So not only am I not a real monk, I'm not a monk at all. And there's been a little bit of confusion why my channel's called Modern Health Monk. And I'm not a vegan, I'm not a vegetarian. Now in today's video, I wanna explain a little bit about my backstory because a lot of you are a bit confused on what the link is between me, the monk thing, Chinese medicine, and having booked a one-way ticket to China and speaking Chinese. What's up guys, it's Alex. So today I wanna to share a little bit about my backstory. Now the reason I originally moved to China way back in I think 2010, 2011, was that I was working a day job. It was a decent day job. I was a teaching assistant at a high school. It was pretty relaxed, I got paid well. But at the end of the year, I realized that this was obviously not my passion. It was obviously not the thing I was most interested in. And it was not the thing I wanted to do for the next 40 years. So I figured, well, this job is always gonna be here for me, so why don't I just get up and do what I always wanted to do? Now, as a kid, I was always fascinated with these stories of like the Merlin, the sage, the physician type figure, where like the kid is in a battle and he falls off a cliff and he gets injured and he's revived, resuscitated by the sage figure in the woods, the hermit, who turns out to be the Kung Fu master mixed with the doctor, mixed with the mystic, and the person just lives in the woods. So I was really fascinated with this kind of story, this narrative that you kind of see throughout history and in different cultures all over the world. And so I basically either wanted to be that person or I wanted to be apprenticed with one of those kind of people. So I figured, well, if China is like the land of the mysterious, right, the Orient, like we used to call it 50 or 100 years ago, why don't I just go over there, see what I can do and just go? I mean, when I was in college, I didn't even want to go to college because I just wanted to go off and do all the things I'd always wanted to do. I wanted to just go off. If I wanted to for five years, I could become an ass-kicking kung fu master, a doctor, and a monk, and then just come back in 10 years with some long Taoist beard, <laughs> some complete wannabe. But the point was that now I could finally do it. And that was the biggest dream for me. I felt like that was some kind of personal calling. So as a result, I did it. I stayed in China, I had a really good time. I basically spent my time, four hours a day I would study Chinese in a class, three hours a day on my own. The rest of the time I spent training three hours a day in a park in Beijing uh, with a guy named Zhou Jigla. And he was basically a bodyguard for the Communist Party. He was a Tai Chi teacher, but he was like a legit Chen style Tai Chi teacher. Like this guy was one of the disciples of this guy named Chen Yu. And Chen Yu was one of the most badass figures in this kind of Chen family lineage. So this guy was not only a bodyguard for the Communist Party, he loved picking on the white boy, which was me. I was the only foreigner. And so he would like throw me over his head, like on packed dirt that was as hard as rock. Just throw me on my head, just, uh, just clothesline me under where I would black out and I'd fall on the ground. And after he made sure on the ground I wasn't dead, he would just be like, he would look at me and go, Li De, zem yang? It's like, Li De, like, how's it going? And like, if I wasn't dead or bleeding or my arm wasn't broken and the bone sticking out, he would just laugh. And so this guy was a real sick bastard. But he was the kind of guy that I went to China for. I wanted to find the real deal, not a bunch of old people like, oh, just chilling in the park. That's great. But I wanted to find the roots, and the roots of even Tai Chi were martial. They were on the battlefield for killing people. It wasn't child's play. It wasn't to help grandma with her constipation or her acid reflux. So I go to China, I end up doing all this, and it took me a while because he didn't speak a lick of English, not a word, right? None of these teachers in the park spoke any English and so it was up to me to know the Chinese. So I spent a lot of time studying the Chinese. I spent a lot of time in the park. And then eventually, as the year came to an end, I realized that, you know what? Maybe martial arts was not my biggest calling. It's not that I wanted to be like a healer versus a fighter. I just realized I wasn't that motivated to train three hours a day on my own. And if I wanted to become one of the greats of all time, if I wanted to become a Mozart of my craft, if I wanted to become a Da Vinci, an Einstein, a Tesla, I had to find work that I cared about that I could train three or six or 10 hours a day. And if I wasn't that motivated, then maybe I hadn't found my work. So I have these gears going in my head that maybe this is not actually my work. Maybe this is not what I wanna do. So eventually I come back to the US and then I'm trying to figure out, well, what now? Cause I just spent a year or over a year in China. I know Chinese and I have no clue what to do. Because when I went, as far as I was concerned, my biggest passion was martial arts. And now that I was clear that it wasn't, I was like, all right, well, what now? When I created Modern Health Monk, 
it was a fusion of me being a personal trainer when I got back to the US, but trying to fuse more than just the physical. Now, what I know now in retrospect was that it was actually my soul's attempt to communicate what I'm doing now, studying, doing a doctorate in Chinese medicine, which Chinese medicine is the fusion of the physical illness, the psycho-emotional, the mental, and even the realm of the spirit. And it was my attempt to mix the whole idea of the monk with modern health, meaning medicine. Now, I didn't know at the time, three or four years ago when I started the website, that, that would, that's what my soul or whatever was trying to communicate, but it was. And so as a result, I'm just basically an idiot and I created a brand that wasn't well aligned with what I do now. With There's a bunch of douchey pictures of me with shirtless on the internet and a bunch of videos. That's obviously not well aligned with the brand of a monk, of humility, of a simple plain life, of simplicity, of tranquility. So there's a little bit, a few of those threads, but basically it comes down to me making a big mistake with my brand. And now going to this future Dr. Alex brand, there'll be a lot more alignment there and a lot less topless videos. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. But that's what I wanted to just communicate for a second here. A little bit about that story, how it came to be, and how it came to be Modern Health Monk and what it really means. But as far as I'm concerned, there are a couple lessons here for you today. So the first lesson is to follow your intuition and those little hunches because you really have no idea where they're going to bring you. Like if you asked me four years ago if I would have four or whatever of these books out, have the number of YouTube subscribers or even be a YouTuber or on video, writing every day, having my own business, studying a doctorate in Chinese medicine, like that's not in a million years would I have guessed that. And that's only in four years. Like I can't even imagine what's going to happen in the next four. That's insane. I mean, it's insane how quickly things can change. And I know right now four years may seem like an impossibly long time, but in the scheme of a 90 year human lifespan or a hundred, if you take care of yourself, it's nothing. Like it's nothing. But the thing is you never can predict right? Like if I never had listened to that calling to go to China, maybe that might not have led me to my passion, which is Chinese medicine. And if I'd never listened to starting this online business, maybe I never would have written my book, Master of the Day, which has helped thousands of people. And maybe if I never had written that, I never would have started doing these videos. And this is what I love more than anything now. And so it's like every little step leads you to the next progression. It's this idea of like stacking the bricks. I talk about it in my book, Milk the Pigeon, but everything builds off of the other. But if you don't start the first one by following your intuition, you're never going to get to the next one and brick 50, which could be your home run in terms of fulfillment, financial success, happiness, or whatever. The second idea here is that the people whose lives get derailed the most are the ones who ignore their gut. I mean, it's insane. The world we live in now, look at the ways people used to, dis- the, the, all the tactics and the strategies, the drugs, the substances, people used to distract themselves from themselves. Coming home to have five drinks because you hate your job. Going home to smoke that bowl or doing some other kind of hard drug because that's how you deal with boredom or fear or not being sure about what's going to happen in life or in your relationship. The reality is that I've coached so many people about food and their weight and the issue has nothing to do with food or their weight. It happens because they're unhappy. They don't want to be in that relationship. They don't want to be in that job. They hate what they do every day. They have no certainty or control, they think, over their future. And so food is that feeling of control. It's like a best friend that's always there for you at the end of the day. You can always rely on it. It will always be there. And what I find is that the people who are the most fulfilled, the most happy, they go after their gut, which means maybe, maybe you have to quit your job. And maybe when you quit your job, you're happy, you stop stress eating, you lose the 20 pounds. I've seen it. Maybe you're too socially isolated because you moved across the world. You move back, you've got friends and family, you're no longer anxious, you're no longer bored. Those three, four drinks a night go away, you lose 20 to 30 pounds and you get fit again. It's just, it's shocking to me how much dietary issues are not about the diet at all. It's about life. And the, the thing is, is that when we ignore what's going on inside or we dull it or we drug it, you're not, you just turned off your body's meter. It's your body's North Star. It's trying to tell you where it wants to go, exactly what it wants to do with humans, who to be in a relationship with, who to be friends with or not be friends with, what kind of work to go after, maybe to quit your job, maybe to go after some passion, but you're afraid. There's all these but, but, buts that come up. But if you listen to the gut, you're going to be doing the right thing for your soul And ultimately, at the highest level, medicine and health is all about dealing with your soul first. Because if you can do that, 
the body's gonna follow suit. I hope that helps you guys. It gives you a little bit of backstory why it's called Modern Health Monk, and there's quite a large, I guess, disconnect between what I'm doing and my brand sometimes, but also the direction I wanna go in, where I came from, and hopefully some lessons you can take away for the path going forward. It all revolves around following your personal legend, right? That's the idea in Paulo Coelho's book, The Alchemist. I spent the last summer in Spain, in Andalusia, tracing the little pathways that Paulo Coelho talked about. And I find that when you follow what you feel the most called to do, you don't judge it, you don't, don't let the mind come in and be like, ah, that's not going to work, or ah, I need to make money, or ah, figure it out. Do both. If it's, you have a full-time job, do that to support yourself and your family, and in the after hours, do what your soul wants. The point is you have to do that because so much illness manifests I've seen or abuse of food or drugs because of that disconnection, whether it's with people or with life or with yourself where you feel like you know what you want, but you're not going after it for whatever reason. So I hope that helps you guys. Before you go, I want you to comment there below. Let me know something that your soul is saying, but you're ignoring it because of fear. This is going to be a big one. It's going to be juicy. You got to be brave to do this. So leave a comment there below because I really want to hear it. For me, the biggest thing was I waited until 29 to do what I most wanted to do in this world, which was Chinese medicine. I could have been doing that 10 years ago and I waited till now. So don't make my mistake and do what you need to do for your soul. Hey guys, it's Alex. The best way to stay in touch with me is to first download that guide on my site, Five Daily Habits to Help You Lose Your Next 20 to 30 Pounds. Click the video right there to watch the last video that I just released. Click the awesome monk dude to subscribe so you get the next video when it's out. And if you like this tiny daily habits approach, come on, check out my book, Master the Day. It's in the description or in Amazon. And it's all about the tiny daily success habits I learned interviewing people that lost over 100 pounds and kept it off years later. And if you send me a receipt to alexander at modernhealthmonk.com, I will send you a two-hour bonus video course for free. All right, guys, so go do those three things now, and I'll catch you in the next video.